This lesson focuses on quadratic functions, specifically in standard form. Now, this is the formula for standard form quadratic functions. Probably the last time you heard standard form is when you're working with uh, more linear equations. So when you had y equals mx plus b as your slope-intercept form, you're like, oh, you know, that kind of makes sense. So I just find the point on the y-axis where it crosses, and then I have a slope and all that good stuff. It was easy to find the parts out of it, whereas when you had x plus by equals c, kind of easy to graph in the sense that you could, if you're doing it by hand, you could use intercepts method, but not as functional to find all the component parts. In this case, uh, quadratic standard quadratic standard form, I should say, um, is difficult to find the parts, but the graph will, uh, most calculators are planning ahead to graph them. They're ready to graph as opposed to making the sort of standard form adjustments you need to for linears. So ups and downs. Anyway, let's look at standard form through the lens of uh, vertex form. So we have vertex form here in terms of what it, the basic set of it ha setup of it happens to be. And what I'm going to do is create up in the left corner here a little bit of a vertex form graph situation. So I'd end up with, say, 2 times the quantity x plus 3 squared minus 2. So if I were to graph this, and that was supposed to be a straight up and down line, that didn't happen. It still didn't happen, but oh well. Um, I know that it's going to be stretched by 2. I'm going to move it 3 to the left. So 1, 1, 2, 3. And then it's going to go down 1. So right here, it's going to be sort of stretched. So I'm going to get this general graph. All the parts are easy to find by hand and that whole thing. Uh, if I were to try to graph it in the calculator like that, uh, you know, you can do it. It's not super hard. It's just not in standard form. So if the nice thing about this is it gives me a lot of information, as I was saying. The axis of symmetry, for instance, in this, in this situation, is just x is equal to h. Now, I said that it has to be in the equation minus 3, so if I went, if this is plus, I need to sort of change the sign to give myself the real h value, which is negative 3, and there's the nice axis of symmetry. It was also simple to find the vertex, because all I did was take h and k, and that was it. Negative 3 and uh, minus 1, so that would be, you know, a perfect way to find the vertex. And the coefficient here is just a. The benefit of the coefficient is it tells me something about maybe the maximum and minimum, uh, whether I have a maximum and minimum value, that kind of thing. Um, so in standard form, it's a little different. What I'm going to do now is take the vertex form and expand it out so you can see where all this junk from standard form pops up and why it's written the way that it's written. So I have a times the quantity x minus h. And what I'm going to do is actually expand out that formula. So now I'm going to do the uh, sort of the FOIL method here. So I end up with a times x squared, and you'll do x minus h, and there'll be two of them, or x times h, I'm sorry, and there'll be two of them, and they're both negative. So next, negative h x, and then my plus h squared plus k. Then I need to distribute out my a everywhere, so I end up with an expansion that looks like a x squared minus 2ahx plus ah squared plus k. Now from here I can start to see that it's starting to look like that, you know, that x squared form that I had before. I have an x squared right there. So where I'm coming up with the idea of, okay, this is where, this is the match. So what's the axis of symmetry match? Well, before I said uh, that h was my axis of symmetry, but in order to do it here, I don't have an h. So what I'm going to do is look at, okay, well, what's a? a is good. a, a I can work with. Because a is still in existence in front of x squared, so fortunately in the one situation, a horse is still a horse. So a works perfectly. Now in this, I have a b, so I need to sort of get an idea of where that b value is coming from. When I look at standard form, you should see there's a b like right in here. And I want to know, well, where's that coming from? So the b in this situation is this right here, the negative 2ah, because you'll notice that b is in front of x. So I had this. Uh, the useful thing for me before was my axis of symmetry. So I used to say that the axis of symmetry was x is equal to h. So I can adjust this formula by getting h by itself. So, uh, sorry, 
forgot the b. Um, so instead of saying that my axis of symmetry is x is equal to h, my new axis of symmetry once I convert to standard form is x is equal to negative b over 2a. And that comes from that point right there. So from here I need to figure out, well, what's the vertex? Because there's still a part that I'm missing. The sort of the bummer part of standard form is there really isn't an equivalent to k. So you kind of have to use a bit of trickery, not really, you just use math to figure out what the vertex value is. The reason that the k thing works in the vertex form is because it's defined that way. It's a vertex form. Standard form doesn't work like that. So you might see uh, the equation for the vertex looking a little bit something like this. See, so the h value is just still negative b over 2a, and your k value, they say, is f of negative b over 2a. And what that means is essentially the only way you can find the actual y, val or, yeah, y value of your uh, vertex is to plug in your x value and get your y into your uh, essentially into your original equation. So whatever your equation is, so whatever these numbers happen to be, once you find your h value, which is going to be your axis of symmetry, so once I know I've got this thing going on, once I know what this value is, I can sort of lock it in and whatever matches once I plug that x value into this is going to give me my y value. So it's not as if you have some simple way to do it where you, in vertex form you do, you can just use k, that's your the you know, y component of your vertex. In standard form, not so nice. You just have to plug in your x uh, form and then get the information back out. What you can find, incidentally enough, is your uh, y-intercept, which would be your c-value. Let's do uh, one from a graphing perspective. Maybe it'll make more sense. Who knows? So the question says, y is equal to 2x squared plus 4x minus 6. And obviously, my first step um, in terms of just showing you it is I'm just going to graph it, which I already did. Uh, see, it's all typed in, and I just hit graph, and it made this. So I can sort of get a general idea of where things are. Um, as an aside, you can go in and hit second on the T84 plus into the calc menu. You could find what the maximum or minimum value is, more or less. Um, you can find specific values, like I want to know what Y is when X is whatever. So that makes it really easy to find the, um, the K component of the standard form, but it's still, you know, it's calculator niceness more than anything else. So if I'm going to do it by hand, the first thing that I need to do is find my a, b, and c values, and I, you know, kind of write them down. So my a, val a value, of course, is 2. My b value is 4. And my c value is negative 6. Uh, the axis of symmetry, I said in this case, would be negative b over 2a or x is equal to that. So my axis of symmetry should be negative 4 divided by 2 times 2, which should be an x value of negative 1. Kind of lost my brain about how I was going to present that. And you can see in the graph here, if I can get the calculator back up, that the graph looks like it's right around negative 1. And in fact, if I was so interested in finding uh, that, I could just go in and hit these buttons, and you can find uh, sort of your uh, values by picking a zero or whatever it happens to be. Um, from here, I'm going to find my vertex, which in the thing is really super simple. In the calculator, it's very simple to find it. You just go in and pick the value, and you say, okay, well, if x is negative 1, what's y? And it'll tell you that it's negative 8, which is the uh, vertex value that you would need to match it. So that's one way you can get the vertex value. Just plug it into the value section. The other side of it is that I know that the x value of my coordinate is just whatever my axis of symmetry value is, so negative 1. To find the matching y value that goes with it, all I need to do is go back into my original equation up here and type in or substitute in my x value. And then whatever m thing pops out, I don't know why I put that in parentheses, I meant to put this in parentheses, um, it will be the number that goes right here, the y coordinate. So 1 squared would be 1 times 2 gives you 2. Negative 1 times 4 is minus 4. And then minus 6. So 2 minus 4 minus 6 would give you negative 8. So my vertex is negative 1 and 8. Finally, my y-intercept, they may ask you that information. Well, your y-intercept is just your c-value, so your y-intercept is negative 
6. It makes it easy to graph once you have all this information. That's why you find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my, uh, my really badly drawn hand graph here. And I'm going to say that my vertex is going to be at negative 1 and 8, so somewhere right in here. My y-intercept is going to be at 0 and negative 6, so somewhere in there. And then from there, I'm just going to uh, basically draw it up from whatever it needs to be. So kind of this thing. that look. In the calculator you can actually find out where it crosses the x-axis as well. Those would be zeros just in case you're interested. But that's graphing in standard form. It's not super difficult to do. Um, it's, m it's more difficult to explain it than it is to actually do it. The last type you might be asked to deal with is converting standard form to vertex form, which is always one of their favorite things. They love you to go from one end of it to the other. In order to do that you just make some minor changes to the organization of things and then it all kind of works out. We're going to start out finding out what uh, my x values happen to be and you know sort of how all that works. So I'm going to find my vertex and then I'm going to find my uh, axis of symmetry and that sort of thing. So I need to find my axis of symmetry first. Negative b over 2a. So in this case that would be negative 4 divided by 2 times negative 2 and I end up doing negative 4 divided by negative 4. So my, axis of, uh, so my axis of symmetry here would be x is equal to 1. I can use that information to plug back in and get my uh, vertex. So, or my y value for my vertex. 1 squared plus 4 times 1 minus 5. So negative 2 plus 4 minus 5 and you end up with negative 3. So I can take this information from my x, then this is information from my y, and now I have my vertex value of 1 and negative 3. The cool thing about that is it's really easy now to write my vertex form. Because if you remember, vertex form is f of x is equal to a, that's the part I have to find, um, x minus h squared plus K. Now, if you remember, the H and the K were the vertices, so minus 3 goes right there. I also need to think, okay, my H value goes right here, and since the formula is already in a nice organized fashion, I can just put a 1 right there. If this were negative 1, I would have to put a plus there, just so you know. Uh, my A value, as I said before, is one of the very few universal things. So my A value before was negative 2. My A value now is going to be uh, negative 2 as well. And that's it. It's not super difficult to find uh, convert standard form into vertex form, and that's just an easy, uh, relatively easy, I would say, way to get the correct answer. So I hope that you found all the information on here useful to you, and I hope that uh, you it makes sense when you have to use it.